two sisters haunted by a spirit after using a corpse's hair to make a wig. A mortician grows obsessed with a corpse unknown to its sinister deeds. Bosses who prank their employees find out a horrifying secret about them. The movie consists of three short horror stories. The first one is called The Wig. The opening scene shows us an old man cutting off a corpse's hair. When he isn't looking, the corpse opens its eyes, which have now turned milky white. May and Mint are sisters who own a wig shop. They don't get along well because May works hard on making wigs, whereas Mint is always spending money and getting into trouble. That morning, they get a call from their parents who were on vacation. They plan to return home the next morning and ask the girls to take care of the shop till then. A while later, a lady arrives at the shop to sell hair for wigs. Little does she know, the hair belonged to a corpse and has evil spirits attached to it. The bag with the hair starts to move, making May's dog bark at it. She then starts to groom the hair before turning it into a wig. As she combs it, a demonic hand tries to grab her from behind. But when she turns around, it disappears. At night, Mint goes out to a party with her friends. Their employee, Som, leaves right after, leaving May alone in the shop. She locks the doors to the shop and continues her night routine. Suddenly, her nose starts to bleed. A worried May cleans it, but notices that the water in the basin isn't running down the drain. On checking, she pulls out a clump of hair from inside it. The drain then starts to make weird noises. She moves closer to listen to it when a demonic pair of fingers emerge from the drain. A startled May falls to the floor as the hand elongates and grabs her face. All of a sudden, she wakes up from her nap and realizes it was all just a bad dream. She again hears a noise and carefully walks towards the door, only to find Mint and her friends outside. They mock her and walk upstairs to drink and party. One of them, named Lin, steals the wig that May was working on. He wears it and acts goofy, making the others laugh. When May notices they have taken the wig, she is furious. She scolds Mint for being irresponsible and for spending all their parents' hard-earned money. Lin goes downstairs to put the wig back when the lights go out. It's exactly 3 a.m. on the clock. Lin freezes in shock when he notices the ghost of a girl behind the mannequins. A pair of hands grab his face from behind as he screams in fear. The others hear his screams and run to see what is wrong. To their confusion, Lin is nowhere to be seen and there is a pool of blood on the floor. Then they look at one of the shelves and are terrified to see Lin's decapitated head between the mannequins. The group freaks out and falls to the ground. They try to unlock the door to run away, but unfortunately for them, the key breaks. Following that, they try to break the lock as a whole. Mint's friend June goes to the kitchen to get something heavy, but comes across the ghost instead. When the others come looking for her, they find her on the ground. They try to get her up, but a demonic hand emerges from her stomach. She is then thrown up to the ceiling, which kills her instantly. The other three run to the roof to call for help. Pond sees the ghost in front of him and falls backwards. To his misfortune, he lands on a pile of nails and dies immediately. Now the only ones alive are the sisters. They seek refuge in the kiln dry room. As Mint walks out to get her phone, the ghost traps May inside the dryer. Mint tries her best to get her sister, but in vain. The machine overheats and explodes with May still inside it. The force of the impact sends Mint flying to the wall, but May is nowhere to be seen. The following morning, Mint wakes up to the sound of her parents' arrival. She tries to explain what happened last night, but no one seems to hear her. May, who is well and alive, hugs her mother as her father starts looking for Mint. Mint notices a glass shard on her stomach and realizes that she has died. In the last scene, May opens her eyes, revealing that the ghost has possessed her. The second story in the series is called Corpse Bride. Junior mortician Todd and a nurse are assisting the corpses of a husband and wife, namely Mike and Cherry. Todd has to stay in the house for a few days with the corpse until the family of the dead arrives. A curious Todd tries to sneak a look at the corpse's faces, but is scolded by the nurse. She briefs him on what he should do while he stays in the house and asks him if he is scared. 
Todd confidently says that he will do fine. After the nurse leaves, he's left alone in the house. As he takes a nap, we see a glass showpiece move. It has two statues that are supposed to be Mike and Cherry, but Cherry's statue seems to have broken. The next day, Todd sees that Cherry's coffin cover has moved a little. When he moves closer, a lizard falls onto it and crawls inside the coffin. Todd opens the cover to get the lizard out, but the creature gets inside Cherry's dress. He also notices stitching on Cherry's neck and chest, but doesn't think much of it. He tries to remove her clothes slowly when Mike's coffin moves a little, almost as if he's jealous. Todd is shocked, but he simply moves the coffin back to its place. He then returns back to his room, still processing what he just witnessed. Inside a drawer, he finds a box and opens it. The broken part of the showpiece lands under the bed, but disappears right after. Other than that, the box consists of a camera and a CD. He checks the camera and finds a picture of Cherry taken by Mike. Everything seems normal until he plays a video of Mike abusing Cherry. While walking outside, he notices a thread on the doorknob that leads somewhere. Without thinking much about it, he follows the thread and reaches a room where Cherry stands in front of him. She reaches her hand out, asking him for help. Todd extends his hands towards her, but right then Mike forcefully takes her away. Todd wakes up on his bed and realizes it was only a dream. He's now sure that something bad has happened in the house. Next, he drags Mike's coffin into the room with Buddha's shrine. He also ties a holy thread around the coffin to keep the evil from coming out. Following that, he brings Cherry's corpse out. He has started to like her, even though she's dead. He takes her everywhere in the house, cleans her body, and talks to her as if she is still alive. One night, he's sleeping beside Cherry in his room when he hears noises from outside. On checking, Todd is surprised to find Mike's coffin empty. He senses Mike's hand trying to touch him from behind and runs back to his room in fear. But he's met with another surprise when he sees the bed is empty. All of a sudden, someone from under the bed grabs his legs and pulls him under it. Todd fights back and almost gets away, but Cherry's hand catches his leg and stabs him with the broken glass piece that was lost earlier. He somehow manages to get away from the room and lands in front of Mike's corpse. Todd then gets a vision of the day Mike and Cherry died. Mike reluctantly ties his wife's hands with ropes because she is suicidal and has gone out of control. But when she begs him to let her free, he unties her. Cherry, however, goes ballistic and cuts his throat with the glass piece from earlier. Following that, she kills herself as well. Todd realizes that Cherry has been the evil one this whole time. He tries to run away, but Cherry grabs him by the throat and kisses him. In the following scene, Todd finds himself inside Cherry's coffin. He yells and bangs the cover, but cannot open it because Cherry is sitting on top of it. The last movie in the series is named O.T. An employee named Az is using date sites while pretending to work overtime. Her co-workers, Bump and Jing, wish her goodbye and wait for the elevator. They hear a strange noise from behind them and see a floating, decapitated head. The two freak out and run downstairs. Their screams alert as she gets up to check what's wrong, but is startled by a chair moving on its own. Before she can react, all the computers start to flicker and strange noises are heard, as also panics and runs away. Their bosses, Karen and T, come out of their cabin laughing, revealing that they were behind the pranks the whole time. They knew that Az was pretending to work while she was chatting on dating sites, so they're happy that they taught her a lesson. Karen then makes his way to the elevator, but is stopped by a chair moving on its own. He realizes that someone is trying to prank him and asks them to come outside. On being caught, Bump and Jing reveal themselves. Their bosses have pranked them a lot throughout the years, so they thought it would be fun to scare them for once. A while later, T is in his cabin when Bump and Jing come to inform him that they are finally leaving. T is now alone on the floor when he hears a noise from the other room. On checking, he comes face to face with the ghost of a girl. He laughs at her, believing that someone is trying to play a trick, but when he turns the lights on, the ghost disappears. 
Then the fridge starts to move aggressively on its own. Karen returns and opens the fridge to put food inside. T is still confused as to what happened earlier. When he's alone again, the ghost of the girl crawls out of the fridge. T panics and runs to Karen's cabin, only to come across his distorted face. He passes out because of shock. Karen takes his mask off, revealing that he'd planned the prank along with Bump and Jing. They try to wake T up, but realize that he has died because of the impact. The three look at each other in terror. They had not anticipated that their harmless prank would take a dark turn. Karen tells the two that he will take care of the situation and asks them to go home. When Karen returns to his cabin, T wakes up laughing at them. It turns out he was just faking being dead to scare them. They walk into Karen's cabin and are shocked to see him hanging from the ceiling. He has committed suicide, regretful of killing his friend. Suddenly, he starts laughing, revealing that this is also a prank. Following that, everyone has had enough pranks for that day. They decide to leave, but Karen stops them to put a warning sign on the broken fridge. To stick it to the fridge, he asks Bump to get some tape from T's cabin. However, Bump is met with utter shock when he sees T's limp body lying on the cabin's floor. He screams in fear, calling the other two into the room. It's revealed that when T was scared by Karen the last time, he'd fallen onto a paper pin and died. Since then, they have been talking to T's spirit. The three try to run away, but the door is locked. Bump and Jing go to Karen's office to fetch the keys, but things get weirder when they see Karen's body lying on the floor. They figure that he had died while trying to prank them earlier. Both of their boss's ghosts approach the cabin, making Bump and Jing run away in fear. At last, we see that T and Karen are perfectly fine. They'd used mannequins to prank the other two. They get into the elevator to finally leave for the day and see that Bump and Jing are still there. Just then, Karen gets a call from the building's security guard, informing him about two dead bodies on the ground floor. It's revealed that when Jing and Bump ran away, scared of the floating head, they'd fallen off the railing and died. T and Karen have been talking to their spirits this whole time. The movie ends as Bump grabs Karen's hand inside the lift.